Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar together with my co-host Mark Rorich at Statewide News Service and jbiztechvalley.com and now columnist for the Jewish Press. Right, and uh, with us today, Rabbi, is a very special guest. I've been trying to get him on the show for a long <laughs> time. His name's Tom Mastro. He's the president of the Student Assembly of the State University of New York. And uh, he is a board member, a uh, board of trustee member, and it's just such an honor to have you here and for you to be on such a prestigious board, too. Thank you for uh, having me here. You know? Listen, just uh, let's get the facts out for our yep. viewers. How many st SUNY campuses are there? How many students go there? And um, like, what is your then probably description of your job, whether you're yep. trying to be an advocate or? Yep, so uh, the SUNY system has 64 individual campuses. Half That's a lot. I didn't know. I thought it was going to be four or five. No, no, 64, well, roughly. There were, there were four SUNY centers, uh, university centers, yep. and then there were many uh, colleges and then community Seattle colleges. Right. Yep. But now I thought we had 65 because of SUNY Poly. No, no, no. still okay. 64. Yeah. So 64 individual campuses ranging from community colleges all the way up to our university centers like our Binghamton University, U University at Albany schools. Roughly a half Albany a million. Is the biggest? Um, university at Albany is not the biggest, but it's considered a university center, um, along with, you know, University at Buffalo, uh, Binghamton University, Stony Brook University. Mm -hmm. Those are the university centers. Um, across the system, there's around roughly a million, uh, half a million students no, um, across, spanning across all 64 campuses. Um, every campus has their own individual student government, um, you know, at the community college level, like I said, but also at the four-year level. Um, SUNY Student Assembly is the overarching student government, um, so we work with all the different student governments from across the system. Um, I serve as the president of, uh, of that student government, and you know, we work closely with all of our constituents across all of our campuses. Um, How old are you now? Um, I'm 20, 23. Just turned 23. Yes. And you're a senior? Yep, senior at Binghamton University. Okay. How do you have time for both? I mean, it sounds like a, <laughs> it's like a full time job, but it's not. Yeah, a yeah. Like. Um, lot of travel. Um, a lot of travel and, you know, doing homework and, and studying on the road in, in hotel rooms is, you know, I do that weekly. But what does the government do? Give me a, a, yeah. uh, you know, a classic situation where you have to t take care of something in the yeah. student body. Yeah, so, you know, uh, the SUNY Student Assembly, like I said, is the overarching student government. We tackle issues at both the state and national level. Um, and, you know, we, we work on things like tuition. We work on things um, such as, um, you know, diversity issues across our campuses and issues that impact students um, on the larger platform. So uh, issues that impact everyone on all of our campuses, we handle the, the larger scale well, issues. Well, tuition, I'm, what's your input? Because I know they're always uh, screaming to students, yeah. oh, you're raising tuition, it's too much, it's yeah. too hard. I mean, do you have an input in there? Yes, um, so right now our tuition plan, uh, it's called New York SUNY 2020. That's up for renewal right now. Um, it, it's been the plan for the past five years and it's up for renewal to implement it for another five years. Um, well, and in your four-year experience, yes. did you like the fact that it went up incrementally? Um, you know, and th this is one of the key caveats to our renewal resolution that says we support this. Um, we support the predictability of our tuition, knowing that our money that we spend into our education stays on our campuses. Um, right, and personally, as yeah. a student, as yeah. a, just one, you have one vote, one yeah. person. What you know? Did you enjoy? Did you like the fact that it went up yeah. incrementally? Um, so, you know, no student enjoys seeing tuition rocket, you know, you know um, go up every year. Um, and, you know, we're taking a very clear stance that, you know, moving forward, we can't, we don't agree with it going to that $300 maximum threshold every year. Um, so, so, you know, I've seen the benefits of our tuition dollars. Throughout the past five years, we've, we've uh, hired 900 plus uh, new faculty and staff across our campuses. Three, we yep, 350 new programs and, and degree programs across our system, due in large part to our tuition plan for the past five years. Um, you know, uh, five years ago, our campuses were at a very different state financially um, compared to now. You know, the conversation five years ago was what programs do we have to cut? What faculty and staff do we have to cut? That's no longer the case, uh, you know, now. So you um, do say it's better this way. 
Yeah, you know, the, this plan. Why well, you don't like it going up three hundred dollars yeah. every year, every year, or semester. Every year. Every year. Um, yeah. Then you know you still like, you know, it's yeah. still a beneficial, beneficial way of of managing the finances of yes. the university system. And ensuring that the money that we spend stays within our campuses, and okay. this plan has allowed that allowed allowed that to happen. And you know, I when I was a student at SUNY Albany, yeah, we had uh, a group. That was the predecessor to the yep. student assembly. It was the state university, the student association of the state university. Okay. And the person who was always the student government liaison to the board of trustees at SUNY. Yep. Always had this fight. Always was that that uh, un got under the skin of the chancellor yep. or the chairman of the board. There, you seem to have a very positive yeah. relationship with Chancellor Zimper, yes. Nancy Zimper. Yeah. How, how is that? I mean, yeah. all of a sudden I see this uh, kumbaya moment, and yeah. you know, I, uh, you were up on the stage, I think, with a budget. Pre yep, with the, the joint budget the, hearing, yep. This, no, the state of the university speech, Yep, that right? as well, yep. And, you know, so you're really you being promoted here, yeah. you know, as, a, as one of the stalwarts to yeah. go along with the SUNY administration. Yes. So I'm just, you know, that's very strange yeah. for me coming from a different era yeah. to see that kumbaya moment. Yep. So, um, you know, when we look at our initiatives across our board, be it tuition or our stances with, um, you know, sexual assault prevention or, um, you know, apply learning experiences, we've, we've looked at SUNY Systems initiatives and we're able to pair our initiatives, some of them, with, you know, um, what's, what the students want and what system wants. Um, you know, and building those relationships with the chancellor and her cabinet, um, we've we've seen you know more benefits out of you know working together and and having a, a, a um, working relationship to ensure that you know our stances on issues um, you know are implemented in policy, and we've seen that across the board. Um, you know, this year specifically. So there's nothing to really protest. Um, to, no, to you, you, you know, speak and out about to be at no. odds with. <laughs> you, you know. Um, Obviously, students don't want tuition to, to keep going up. Um, but I can, you know, you, you can talk to the chancellor, you can talk to the chairman of the board of trustees, and you know, you could talk to the other trustees. No one wants tuition to go up. Um, you know, so figuring out a plan together right. um, to how we can ensure tuition won't go up. Um, and, and you know, right now, what we're advocating for, um, you know, with our renewal resolution of our tuition plan, is looking at the state investment. Um, you know, what's the state investing into the students? Are they giving more or less within, like, again, even your four years yep. that you've been around? Yeah, so, so, no, actually, so um, when this plan was proposed five years ago, um, you know, the conversation was the state will pay 50%, the students will pay 50%. Throughout the past five years, the students have been paying 70% of the tuition while the state's paying 30 they cut? I mean, they... You, you know, that, that's just been the, the level that it's been at. Um, so, you know, right now, we're looking at this plan and everyone's conversation is stop raising tuition. Um, you know, and, and you know, the legislators say that, you know, um, and you know, our rebuttal kind of is, okay, so in order for our tuition not to go up, we need a true state investment. You know, let's get those numbers both to 50-50 um, because the last five years they've been 70% down to 30%. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why our tuition has, has had to go up is because there hasn't been a true state investment in, in the education. You mentioned sexual assaults on yep. campus. That's a big thing that the governor and Chancellor yep. Zimfer have really uh, taken hold of. Why did you get uh, in the middle of that and to be a proponent with the governor and the chancellor? Yeah, so um, this, is, you know, this is an issue that's sweeping across you know, not only sy uh, SUNY system, but you know, the country. Um, and you know, having a voice and kind of um, ensuring that the students on our campuses know what their options are, you know, and are educated on, you know, if an incident like this happens on campus, who to go to, what are the resources, and you know, that's really the view that we've provided um, as a, as a student government, you know, a policy across the board to ensure that, um, you know, students on all of our campuses have those types but of there options. It's also another thing that the university uh, administration, the individual administrations, don't want their campus to be labeled. Mm -hmm. as, a, you know, as, as a place where these crimes happen. Correct. And they're very, uh, they really don't want it on the record. So yeah. they want it swept under the rug. 
Hmm. Now all of a sudden, is it because the governor and the chancellor said we need to be more open about this, that it's happening, or yeah. why is this uh, changing now? Um, you know, I think it's more it's more prevalent on campuses. You know, um, it's it's something that you know the media talks about a lot. A lot of um, you know our, our campuses are. Um, you know, the climate on campuses are very different um, as, as years go on. So, you know, this, this policy and, you know, bringing it to light um, on campuses that this, you know, was an issue. It's uh, always a question, is it worse now or is it just like you're saying, just people have become more aware of the situation? Um, you know, I can't say if it's worse or, or not. Um, I, I know it as appears to be worse because it's being reported more. It's like well, cancer. Okay. You know, you, you look for the cancer, you're going to see, oh, there's a, such a rise in this type of cancer or that type of yeah. cancer. Well, yeah, because we're looking for it now. So yeah. it's one of those things. It's so fresh and it's so new about the reporting yeah. requirements. You really don't have, it's too early to tell yet, I would yeah. presume. Yeah. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. You grew up in uh, the Binghamton suburb of Endicott? Endwell. Yep. Endwell. Yep. Okay. Did you go to, what, Endwell High School or? Um, Maine Endwell High School, yes. Maine Endwell yep. High School. Yep. Okay. The town of Maine, not the state of Maine. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> we, yeah. uh, did you find that you had a very good edu high school education? Was yes. it public education? Yep, public education. Um, you know, and when I started looking at options in college, um, you know, I... I soon realized, you know, I wanted a foundation to, to, you know, when I go into higher education. And that was, um, you know, I attended Onondaga Community College for one semester, um, which is up in Syracuse. And, uh, you know, I, I attended there for one semester because I wanted to, you know, have the college experience. Um, and soon realized I wanted to, you know, move back home. Um, and so I attended SUNY Broome Community College for two years before transferring to Binghamton University. So you're really, what, on a five-year plan? Nope, I'll graduate on time, four years. Four years. Yep. So you were 18 when you first started, 19, yep. 19 when you first started, because you're 23 yep. now. Yep. All right, because I was 20 when I graduated, yep. so oh. I just... You know, Mark, started. I'm still 29 <laughs> over here, so everybody's so I just, young. I was just here. trying to do the math in my head, <laughs> I didn't know. So you, you, you didn't find that you needed to, because a lot more people are taking a longer period of time yep. to graduate, yep. you know. Um, you, you know, and to kind of touch on that point briefly, um, you know, one of the chancellor's big initiatives right now is, you know, ensuring that our students that are coming into school, um, you know, don't need, are, are well prepared coming into college. Right now, our remedial courses in, you know, English and math, um, the, you know, those are, um, the numbers are going up. So, um, in, in what, regard, what, what do you mean numbers? Yeah, of, numbers. Yeah, of, student, of yeah. students, um, you know, coming into college and needing remedial courses. There are more and more of them. Yeah, you, you know, looking at um, math and English specifically and not being prepared for math and English, um, you know, coming into college. So they have to take these, you know, two or three extra courses, which, you know, can off track their graduation rate. Because they're not really college courses. Well, they, they are, but they're not. Um, when they enter into college, they're not truly college ready. So they need to take three extra courses on top of what they need to take for their requirements. And, you know, three courses is one semester. That could be one semester. Um, so, you know, what the chancellor has been talking about more recently is looking at the K-12 through requirements and, you know, working with the K-12 through educators um, and, and looking at, um, you know, she says this, this a lot, um, the teachers, you know, the teachers in K through 12, we're educating those teachers to be teachers mm -hmm. in the SUNY system. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing to um, better prepare our education students so when they go into the workforce, you know, you know it's, it's, a con it's a consistent cycle. I, this this yeah. goes back 35 years yeah. from when I was in college. Yeah. It hasn't changed. No. There was the oh, you kind of remedial. I, you know, I remember <laughs> my, my journal, my uh, English professor's journalism, uh, Bill Kennedy, who wrote Ironweed, and he's oh, an right author. Sure. He was one of my English he teachers. And, you know, he would slam the papers down and say, <laughs> how could anyone grad be graduating from, uh, from a high school with writing skills like this? Yeah. They shouldn't let them graduate. This yeah. is terrible. And he would be, he was be, and he wasn't the only one, several others, yep. you know, he just says, what are they sending us? Yep. What are they learning in high school? And it's still, ha I, and 35 years, you know, I've been hearing the same yep. thing, one chancellor after another, after yep. another, you know, the, it seems like the story's the same, but the names and numbers change to protect yep. the innocent. Yeah. 
And, and you know, it, it really affects everything. You know, it affects a student graduating on time. It affects the, the amount of debt that students have when they leave. You know, three credits, like I said, is a whole semester of tuition, of just remedial courses that they should know coming into school. Um, so why are they graduating them? And why isn't, let's say, Binghamton or the SUNY schools not rejecting these people if they can't yeah, even write an essay? Yeah. Yeah. That they yeah. have to submit an essay and they can't write it. Yeah. Why aren't they rejecting them? Yeah. You know, a lot of the remedial courses are, are seen at the community college level. Um, and, and you know, those are foundation courses um, in the maths and English area. Um, some of our uh, so they're not in the universe, the college level, or the you, you know some level? universities. You know they, they do have remedial courses, um, but you know um, you see it more at the community college level oh, okay. to prepare them for you know the the next years the four of, years yeah. school. Yeah. but you know it's just one of those things that you just simply want to. No. Do something about it. Solve the problem. Stop talking about it yeah. already. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. And and you know that hasn't happened. And you know you got these brainiacs down at SUNY Central, and they can't even resolve and figure this out. And maybe they well, don't want he says to. He's trying to, to get the teacher to. Thirty-five teach years. Yeah. You know. I'm glad I'm still around here to, to be talking about this because <laughs> there's a long. That's too long. You know what Donald Trump would say? You're fired if that was. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I just, what's your major? Um, I'm studying human development and education right now at Binghamton. With your goals? Human development? Yeah. <laughs> Say this again? I mean, yeah. Is this so, a sociology thing? Or? Um, you know, human development, it's one of those, you know, myself and, and other classmates, what, what is human development? We get asked that question all the time. Um, it's a wide range of, you know, you can do a lot with it. Um, a lot of students, you know, go into the law enforcement area. A lot of students okay. go into social work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going into higher education. Others want to go into K through 12 education. Um, so, you know, you could do a lot with it. It really looks at, um, you know, things from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at um, diversity, equity, and inclusion in some courses. You look at, you know, how do we better um, um, improve our communities. You know, all those types of courses, you know, are seen within the human development degree. And mm -hmm. then I have a, uh, I'll be graduating with a minor in education. Do you, you want to be a professor? That's what it means. Um, I, I would like to, you know, I'm currently applying to grad school right now. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from, from the schools that I've applied to. And, you know, the degree that I want to get in at the master's level is higher education administration. So, you know, working at the college level in an administration field of some sorts. Uh, you, you look like a really polished guy who might be looking for a career in government or politics uh. and why, why not that? Why not go um, You know, I've always had a passion for education. My mother is, uh, you know, an educator of 30 years. She's been a principal for quite a few years now at the, at the elementary school level. Well, that's um. why you turned out so well, but why, you know, <laughs> well, why, why wouldn't you want politics or government? Um, well, actually, you know, when you look at, you know, I want to go into higher education. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, there's, you know, through my position more recently, I've been noticing there's a lot of politics, you know, in education. I've, I've always heard it, but, you know, I'm, I'm living it right mm -hmm. now. You know, there's a lot of politics in higher education. There's a lot of politics in K through 12 education. Um, so, you know, being, you know, polished in, yeah. in politics, you know, will ultimately help me in the higher education so field. Well. Someday you'll be president of a SUNY school, maybe? No. I, mean, just uh, I don't <laughs> think there's ever been a student assembly president or a SASU president who's ever risen to the, through the yeah. ranks to be a SUNY. You could be the first. Yeah, you never know. Well, you <laughs> know, Mark and I had so many superintendents, but they're all PhDs, aren't they doctors? Huh? We get a doctorate and maybe a superintendent. Yep. Well, we should be vocational counselors over right. here, Mark, <laughs> besides being our uh, Jewish few. But, so, well, you know, we wish you luck. But whatever you do, of course. So what, what are some of these roles that you have as president? The Council for Operational Issues, the Council for Academic Issues, yeah. uh, College Assembly, yeah. Faculty Student Association Vice President, yeah. Student of the Giving Campaign, the Chair of the Student Giving Campaign. Yeah. So That's so where the money is. <laughs> That's where the money is. And you're a student ambassador to where? So, <laughs> so when I was, uh, you know, all of that was when I was at SUNY Broome Community College. While, oh, that was other. Yep, other yep. while I was at SUNY Broome Community College, I was the student government president on that campus. Okay. And through that, I, I sat on uh, a number of councils and committees 
um, you know, as the student rep in the shared governance process. All right, how much did you raise as student giving campaign chair? Okay, so our first year, I think we raised, we started it, um, you know, right after winter semester, so we had a few months, um, you know, over $2,000. Was that more than anyone else's ever? It was, it, we started the student giving campaign, so it was the first year. There you go, so you yeah. raised more so than anyone else. So we raised else. more than <laughs> anyone else. <laughs> um, and do you stay in on track with that, to, in touch with that? You know, yeah. And see if they're doing well and if they're picking up on policies you might have set in place? Yeah. Or? Yep, so you know, this, this um, the student giving campaign at SUNY Broome, we, we started it my year, two years ago now, um, when I was there, and you know, it's through the SUNY Broome Foundation, mm -hmm. um, and they have a staff uh, member that, that runs it on the staff end, and then the student government contributes every year um, in, you know, raising money. And when you had to run for student assembly president, yep. did you have to visit every Campus? Did you have to do a real like yeah. leafleting campaign, a mailing campaign? Yeah. What a governor would have to yeah. do to get out there in a yeah. small state of five hundred thousand? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, last year I was the vice president of the student assembly for the SUNY system, um, and well, through that, you know, I made a lot of connections. But um, you had to be elected to that, or you? Yep, I had to be elected to that. So you still had to go yeah, around. So yep. Yeah. So what I did was uh, I did mailing to all sixty-four student government. Um, officials um, okay. that was uh, you know the presidents of the student governments the vice presidents of the student governments some of their executive team um, and I sent mailing um, information about myself um, you know my platform made a lot of calls um, and then at our conferences um, and, I, and I could touch on our conferences as well once in the fall and once in the spring all the student government leaders come together at these conferences um, and we vote on and take stances on you know, issues and, and things at the state and national level. So that's really where all the student government leaders come together. Are these like retreats in the Adirondacks or something? Nope, or? Right, right here in New York. Um, yeah, well, Adirondacks. Yeah, well, yeah, right, um, in, in more of our, um, you know, more popular cities. Okay. Um, we, we, Saratoga is hosting um, our spring conference. Okay. Um, in the fall, we were in Rochester. Mm -hmm. And last spring, we were in Binghamton. We don't go down to the city too much. It's no. a little too expensive. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Um, and, and, you know, we're set up, you know, in a, in a kind of cool way where um, depending on the number of students on the specific campus, they send voting delegates to us. So every um, number of students, you send one voting delegate. Um, the bigger schools send, you know, mm -hmm. uh, University at Buffalo is our biggest SUNY school. They send five voting delegates for the undergrad mm -hmm. and I believe three or four for the graduate students. So you, you know, so you really didn't, I was expecting you to say, oh, I did the social media campaign and, you know, I emailed, I got these yeah. email addresses yeah, from all these students, yep. and, you know, but you didn't, you mailed, you actually. Well, I, I did uh, hard, hard copies of everything mailed to them. Stuffed and, and folded. The, and <laughs> the, yeah, and then uh, I went old school with that. And then what I did was <laughs> I went to things. all 64 student uh, all 64 campus websites uh -huh. and I went through and I collected all their email addresses and phone numbers for all 64 schools mm -hmm. um, and then I sent out emails phone calls and mm -hmm. yeah did you find it rewarding doing that or did you find it annoying yeah. that oh I want to watch this TV program and I'm doing this instead or yeah y you know I yeah I, I <laughs> found myself <laughs> in class at times in lectures uh, sitting there finding information <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so you know it consumed a, a large chunk of, of last spring, but yeah. it was worth it. And uh, what advice do you have for another student who wants to follow in your footsteps yep. and become the student assembly president? Yeah, you know, one of the, um, you know, I was told this when I came into the role, um, you're a student first. Ensuring that, you know, your academics come first, um, you know, and and, you know, what will often happen is um, you know, administrators, faculty, you know, want the student government president's blessing on everything. You know, if the student government president says yes, like, that's it. Um, and, you know, really talking with other constituents and, and ensuring that, you know, you're taking a true stance on an issue um, is, is advice. And, and the other one, like I said, was knowing that you're a student first, academics come first, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, ensuring your studies um, stay at a, at a good level. You know, what do you like to do when you 
had spare time. I mean, yeah. you know, Binghamton has the farm team of the Mets, right? The yeah. Binghamton Mets. Yeah, Binghamton Mets. <laughs> so, are you a Mets fan? Or you, you know? um, I'm I'm not a Mets fan, um, okay. but you know, just. Um, you know, I, I live in downtown Binghamton in student housing right now, but my parents live um, in Andwell, like I said. Um, we have a lot of woods, four-wheeling, um, okay. hanging out with my dog. <laughs> okay. So, you know, hanging out with family, friends is, is really... What you like to do. Yeah. Yeah. And what has been the last movie you've seen or book that you've read besides a college book? Or <laughs> um, Last movie? Huh. I would say one of the Harry Potter movies this, okay. this past weekend. It was on, it was on ABC Family, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't in the movie theater. No. Of sorts. So what? Uh, when was the last time you actually had time to go to a movie theater? And um, members of the student assembly, we went two mm -hmm. weeks ago, and I forget the name of the movie okay. that we went to go see. It wasn't Bridges of Spies or anything. No, it wasn't that no. heavy. No. Okay. <laughs> um, so what do you like, so aside from hanging out with friends and family, I mean, what else do you, what really excites you that you miss, that you want to get back to after all this is over? So um, when I started my college career, I wanted to be a art teacher. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to do. I was uh, heavily involved in art. I was an art major, um, and I've kind of drifted away from that, um, you know, through all of my involvement and not having time. Um, so, you know, kind of, dipping my fingers more into art again mm -hmm. is something that I look forward to after. How much of the culture at SUNY Binghamton did you get involved with? Um, okay, so the, at Binghamton, you know, right now um, I'm very close with the president and vice president of student government there, so I've been involved in, in student government organizations as a student from Binghamton and not, you know, in my SUNY role. Um, so, you know, I've, I've seen, you know, student groups on campus um, and, you know, helping the student government, you know, prepare for different events and, and things of that nature, yeah, going a, to basketball games. There's a large Jewish community in Binghamton. Yeah. Since we're on the Jewish view, I gotta yeah. ask you about this. <laughs> Have you gone to their Chabad house and seen Rabbi Slonim? And um, actually, my, one of my roommates is, is Jewish, and, and we've attended different events, events with him, um, you know, throughout this, this past year. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it was spiritually rewarding, I hope? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, what else uh, would you like to tell us about that maybe we didn't know enough to ask you? Oh, let's see here. Um, you know, I, I have to give a shout out to um, you it's know our to do it. yeah our our other student government presidents from around our system. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in previous years, um, what was going on at Buffalo was going on at Buffalo. What was going on at Albany was on Albany and Binghamton and SUNY Broome. Um, and this year, we've really created a, a culture where, you know, we're a system of, of student governments. Um, you know, SUNY Broome can call up TC3. Mm -hmm. um, Tompkins, Tompkins County, County Community yep, College. Yep. Um, you know, Albany can call up Binghamton. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, so they, they have those opportunities to really, you know, connect and see what's going on on one campus compared to another. All right. And, you know, that's... That's great. Yeah. Okay. And you have a staff? Yep. Uh, people? How many people do you have? Um, so on our executive committee, we have around 30 members. Um, you know, just like I'm elected, um, we have representatives that are also elected by the campuses. Where, do they, where are their offices? Um, so our student, our, our executive committee is from all over the state. Okay. Um, I'm at Binghamton. Um, our vice president goes to the University at Buffalo. So it's virtual. It's a virtual executive yep. committee. Every, every week, um, you know, we have many committees mm -hmm. that, that we have and chairs and directors of committees, and they all meet um, either through phone or video call. Okay. So that's um, every day we have different committee calls and conversations. Kind of what I figured. Yeah. All right, listen, we're out of time, but, time, but you know, listen, we, uh, I see you're energetic and uh, you're young and we know there's going to be great things from you, so we wish you all the great success and continue in, in with your good work that you're doing. Thank you. Yep. Much success. Continue. Thank you.